Hey guys, this is Jocelyn from Fantasia Elegance with another wire wrapped jewelry tutorial for you. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make this very pretty and elegant wire wrapped pendant necklace. It is a match for a previous jewelry piece that I've done a tutorial on, my simple filigree swirl earrings. If you haven't watched that tutorial already, you can click here to go see that. And before we get started, I do have all the tools and materials you'll be needing in the description section below, so you might find it helpful to glance at that before we jump right in. So as we get started here, I wanted to let you know that I am going to be referencing this um, little drawing I have of the pendant throughout the tutorial. Now you don't have to have something like this, but I do find it helpful. It gives you a general guide to follow along with as you're shaping the wires. So I thought I'd show you very quickly how you can um, sketch something like this out if you wanted to do that. Now just for reference, this is going to be about 4 centimeters tall from the uh, base of the bale to the tip of the pendant, 5 centimeters from the top of the bale to the tip of the pendant, and about 2 centimeters wide. So if you wanted to sketch this out yourself and have something to follow along, it's very simple. All you're going to do is start out with making this marquee shape on the outside. So you want to pick your two starting points in a line, top and bottom. Let me just zoom in a little bit here for you. And you're going to do an arc between these two points. And it doesn't matter if it's a little sloppy right now. And you're going to do the same thing on the other side, trying to get a mirror image of what you did. And as you can see, I'm not a great artist, so don't be scared off thinking you can't do this. If I can do this, you can too. And you're going to have a lot of extra lines in here as you try and sketch this out. But there's the general shape of it. Alright, so what you're going to do next is draw two circles. You're going to do a large circle that nests right on the top right here. So you want to make sure that both edges of the circle are touching both edges of our marquee shape here. And then you're going to do a smaller circle at the bottom. Same idea. Just like so. Now you're going to draw a third circle the same size as this one that nests right in this space. So you can see these two circles are going to be the same size. And you're going to draw a fourth and final circle the size of this smaller one. And it's going to nest in the space right here between the big circle and the edge of the pendant. Just like so. You're going to draw two lines. One going from the top of the big circle here to the top of the big circle here. Just draw a straight line right there. And your second line is going to go from the top of this little circle to this circle. Just like so. And then, very simply, you're just going to place your swirls that you want to shape inside of the circles. And this one I actually want to be a little bigger. I want this line to be touching the edge of the circle. So I'm going to just adjust that as I sketch this in here. Alright, and since this got a little messy, what you can do then is take a pen, just trace over it, just like so, and then you can erase all those extra lines we had. Preferably you'd wait a little longer so the ink doesn't smudge. And there you go. It's a little messy because I was doing it through the uh, camera screen, but you get the general idea. And if you wanted, you could go ahead and add in lines for where you'll be putting your, um, your bale up at the top. Just like that. So there you go. I hope you could follow along with that. Let me go back to my one that I actually spent some more time on. <laughs> so 
So again, just for reference, this is about five centimeters tall that way. Two right there. And if you're counting just the marquee shape, it's about 4.2 centimeters. So now we're going to go ahead and cut the lengths of wire we'll be needing for the pendant. And I'm going to use this uh, twisted square wire. Um, this is 20 gauge. You could also use round wire. You'd need to get 18 gauge if you go with round wire. And uh, if you don't want to twist your own square wire like I did here, you can purchase something called diamond cut wire that has the same effect in how it looks. So either 18 gauge round or 20 gauge twisted square wire. And the first piece we want is going to be 6 inches long. And you'll also want a two and a half inch piece. And finally, a two inch piece. Just like so. And I like to go ahead and trim off the, uh, the ends so that I have both ends flush from my flush cutters. Just like so. And I'm going to go ahead and put these two shorter wires aside and pull out that uh, template that we walked through earlier. And again, you don't absolutely have to have this if you just don't feel up to drawing it. I do find it makes it slightly easier though. And so with our six inch piece of wire, I'm just going to bend this right in half, making sure the ends meet. And I'm going to narrow this down so I have a very tight U-shaped bend. And again, I want to continually make sure that my ends meet up evenly. And then taking my chain nose pliers, I'm just going to smush that on down so it comes to a nice sharp point. And go ahead and open that up a little bit. And I'm also going to use my round nose pliers to help open this on up. You may need to uh, make sure it's a nice V shape using your chain nose pliers just to uh, tweak things a little bit. There we go. And you can see we've just made the bottom point of our marquee shaped frame. So what we're going to do now is start arcing these two ends so we have a nice curve. And doing the same thing with the other one. You want to make sure that both sides are symmetrical so the curve matches. And you want to have the same length of tails from where they cross. There we go. And I'm just going to uh, double check this with my template here. As you can see, it fits on for a nice match. So once you've made sure that both sides are even and you have the same length of tails, what we're going to do is bend both of these straight up right before the X where they cross. So now that both tails are going to go straight up, we are going to make a gentle curve for the bail using round nose pliers. I'm going to grip both of these wires and I'm going to bring them forwards slightly above where they started going up. It's probably about an eighth of an inch up. And then I'm going to start curving them back and you kind of have to do this one at a time. But um, let me see if I can do it from this direction so you can see a little bit better. You're just going to be shaping the bail that the chain is going to go through. 
So I'm making a kind of teardrop shape, oval shape, bringing that right back around, just like so. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with the other wire, making sure that both of these teardrop oval shapes are the same, so that uh, both sides of my bale will be identical. Okay, and a good way to check that you're getting both of these um, sides of your bale identical is to go ahead and look from the front, make sure that they're the same height, and also the side, and make sure that they match up in terms of how that little teardrop thing is shaped. Okay, so once you have those both as identical as you can get them, I'm going to uh, go to the bottom of this teardrop shape and taking the tail of the wire, I'm going to grip just below the bottom of that teardrop and bend this out slightly. So that I have both of these two wires here running parallel with each other. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And once you've done that, you can go ahead and trim off the excess tail. And you're going to trim this right at the base of the bale, where the uh, point of your marquee-shaped frame would start. So once you've finished up both loops of your bale, Go ahead and pull out some 24 gauge dead soft wire, and we're going to cut about, oh, maybe one and three quarters inches of this. Just a short piece, really. And we're going to use this to wrap together those two loops of our bale. Go ahead and bend that in half with your chain nose pliers, leaving a small space. And we're just going to drop that over both of our the base of both of our loops here that we made. So I'm just dropping the U-shape on over that. And then we're going to uh, pinch both of these tails shut so they cross, just like that. Go ahead and keep tightening that up. And then you can uh, pull both tails so you're just continuing to cross these, tightening it up as you go. And we're going to start wrapping these around the base of these two, uh, two bail loops. So let me wrap one of them here. And you do want this to be fairly snug, so just tightening up as you go. There we go, and once you run out of space for more wraps, you can just take both of those tails to the back and trim off any excess length that you have. And I'm just going to use my chain nose pliers to make sure that the end is down very securely and isn't poking out or anything. Doing the same thing with the other tail. You may need to uh, separate these out just a little bit. I feel like it looks good to have a slight V-shape, if you will. Just like that. So now that we have our frame done, let's go ahead and take those two shorter pieces that we cut earlier. Again, one of these is two and a half inches and the other is two inches. I'm going to start out with the longer one, and taking my round nose pliers, I'm just going to start curling in the end of this. And what we're doing is making the larger of these two swirls right here. So we're just going to shape it into this uh, nice S shape that we have drawn there. So I'm making an open spiral.
So go ahead and spiral one end and then do the other end in the opposite direction. And you can lay this over your little sketch that you did earlier just to make sure you're getting the right approximate size and shape. And do the same thing with your shorter piece. So there we have the approximate layout, and of course you can do the same thing with your actual frame that you're going to be using, if I can uh, hold on to it here. And at this point you can make any slight adjustments you need, because what you want is to have, I can get this to focus here, you want to have all of your edges touching, so you want this for instance to be touching that outer edge of the frame. So it looks like I need to widen up the loops on this one a little bit. And at this point it's mainly just trial and error doing little adjustments to make sure that everything fits in properly.